D-Way, Dwayne. This is 2016 Grand Cru Clos de Vuitton oh. Mayo Camelze, my friend. <laughs> no, Jesus. <laughs> it ain't cheap. It's definitely, it's definitely not cheap. Hey, this is sommelier Andre Mack, and this is Through the Grapevine, a celebrity wine tasting with a twist, where we test their abilities to taste the difference between cheap and expensive wines, all while having a great conversation. Joining me today is a Chicago native, three-time NBA champ, fast food aficionado, mm. wine enthusiast, and husband to Gabrielle Union. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Dwayne Wade. Thank you. Thanks for calling me by my name and not Gabrielle Union's husband first. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're awesome. <laughs> All right, so today I paired five wines with five rounds of conversation, okay. ranging in price points, your affordable option, daily dose, the nice gift, the special occasion, and then the luxury life. Okay. Uh, and at the end of each round, I'll ask you what you think each wine is worth. Okay. Fair? Fair. Right. And finally, I'll pour you a full glass of your favorite wine as a bonus round as we calculate and tally your score. All right. All right? Yeah. All right, first wine. Give it a swirl, give it yeah. a get a sniffy. What are you thinking? I would immediately say buttery, but I don't feel like it's buttery, it's Got something it. else. But it's smooth, right? Yeah, yeah. Real it's... smooth, like a vanilla, like a Chardonnay. High acid? Yeah, high right, acid. So yeah. is your mouth starting to water? Yeah, my, my tongue gets a little yeah. dry, just a little bit, mm -hmm. but like not bad enough to where you like. Mm -hmm. Not that, but yeah. So you're um, a huge NBA star. You've split your time, you were born in Chicago yeah. uh, and spent a lot of time in uh, Miami. Who shows you the most love when you uh, when you touch down? Oh, it's not even close, Miami. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> really? I think maybe like a small portion of people know I'm from Chicago, uh -huh. but everybody in Miami, you know, they was there in the run, you know, from yeah. from 2003 till you know I retired in 19, and so it's a little rock star like when I go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not bad, but this is an easy drink. You yeah, say, no, oh, totally. This is, this is what I feel like it is. Dwayne, you're a fierce competitor throughout your career. Uh, what were your favorite players to play against? Hmm, well, the greats. Like, I love playing against Kobe. Is yeah. It? And I love playing against Allen Iverson. You know, these are guys that, you know, when you're young, you grow up idolizing. You know, yeah. these individuals, when you, you watch the game of basketball, the ones that, you know, the Magics, the Jordans, the Blairies, mm -hmm. the ones that kind of get you kind of locked in on the game. And so when I got into the league, like, being able to play against Kobe, being able to play against Iverson, two of the guys who were idols of mine. Yeah. Um, that, were, that were definitely two. But then, you know, you got the LeBron James guy over there in Cleveland when I got yeah. in. You know? <laughs> Every time we played against each other, it was a, it was a moment. It was yep. a story. It was a conversation. Um, and so, you know, you love playing against greatness. Yeah. So for me, uh, every time I got a chance to match up, you know, against someone who I looked at as an equal or ahead of me and mm -hmm. someone I was chasing, like, I love those moments. If you had to put together your all-time NBA squad, who's your top five? That's tough. Uh, but it's my favorite player. Your favorite, yeah. Okay, yeah. well then that's that's different. So, okay. Allen Iverson, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, top three. Okay, right. So they're in my team, right? So I got, I'm guard heavy. Uh, LeBron James, mm -hmm. number four, and Shaquille O'Neal, number five. Okay, that'd be my top five favorite players. Oh, I love that. And out of those players, which two players would you like to see play one on one in their prime? Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, of course. Yes. Like yes. Yes. Who would yes. want to see that? Yes. You know, all time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would totally love that. Yeah, sense. that's the showdown. All right, how are you feeling about this wine? This is solid. I mean, you know, this is this is one of the wines that I would tell somebody if you are, like, you're just getting into wine, mm -hmm. you don't really understand it, mm -hmm. and you want to drink something, this is a good This is a good first first wine right here. Yeah, no, Very totally. Very easy. Yeah, yeah, I think it's got great acidity, it's lively, it pops, it kind of, like, jump starts the yeah. evening. Right? Yeah, it's not complex. It's not yeah. a complex wine. No, like, not you at know, all. It don't feel heavy on alcohol. Correct. You know, which is which is very good because it's light, mm -hmm. and so yeah, this is definitely coming to the table to start to start to yeah. meal off with this and ease into it. Yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. All right, so where are you at with this in price point? Where are you thinking you're headed? So I'm gonna go with twelve to twenty-five. Okay. I didn't like how you look down at that car. <laughs> I like how long you I'm, just, I'm just looking at the yeah, car. I like it. <laughs> I'm just looking at the car. All right, so today we have the Las Lilas. This is uh, Vino Verde from Portugal. Oh, I've never uh, had wine is, from Portugal. And this is our, uh, our affordable option. See, um, I didn't think you would give me the affordable option up front. And yeah, I was yeah. like, nah, nah, what do you do that? That's yeah. too easy. No, no, but I think, I think at some point, like, you have to, like, throw all that out 
uh, and like go where you got. This is, yeah. uh, you know, what I love this wine. This is like, it's not an overthinker. Uh, it's not comp- complex in any way, but it's refreshing. And it kind of gets the juices moving. Yeah, I feel like it, it wakes your palate up. Yeah, right? no, absolutely. Yeah. It's very crisp. Wine has always been like a placeholder in time for me. Yeah. Right? It's less about like the wine. It's about the wine, but like it's more about like the conversations and the people you're sharing it with. Yeah. Um, you know, it sets the mood and the tone. Yeah. Uh, and generally, when I like to start things and, and meet new people, this is the way I like to start the evening. All right, you ready for round two? I'm ready. All right. So, another white wine. Okay. Mmm. Yeah, you like that color? Well, yeah. yeah. That's the first thing you notice, right? Yeah. Compared to the last one. Ooh. Okay. Yeah? You feeling that? Yeah, I'm feeling this. Okay. Right? I smell, do you smell melon? Yeah, it's definitely melon. melon? Uh-huh. Sure. Uh, I think I like a slight hint of like butterscotch. Remember those those little yellow candies in the yellow wrapper? Yeah, my, yeah, those my, my granddad bullets. used to give them to me. Yep, mine too. <laughs> mine too. <laughs> mine too. Slime me a few. Yep, yep. I did work in restaurants growing up, it's and a- uh, I worked a lot um, I, in San Antonio. I was at a steakhouse, and I used to see a lot of NBA coaches come in. Uh, and then I started to see a little bit more of the players start to come in. Uh, and that just reminded me a lot of like you, Chris Bosch, and, and LeBron, like having these dinners with incredible wine that we got yeah. to witness from the side through social media. Um, that just seemed like awesome. Tell me about that. Like, were there like like cool pairings and stuff that you did or? Well, yes. You know, I think the one thing is like wine in the NBA, it's been a part of the NBA forever. We, yeah. you know, it's, but it was always kind of frowned upon when you think of athletes and, and, and alcohol mm-hmm. or anything of that sort. And so to be able to be in the space, myself, LeBron, Carmelo, CP, and this generation, to be able to be there, to be the ones that, you know, kind of uh, made it uh, more approachable, you know, made it like, hey, guys, listen, we athletes, but we do drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, if you don't see anybody doing what you're doing, you don't think it's for you. Um, and the fact and the amazing thing when I talk about wine in a lot of circles, you know, the NBA and the players always come up to the top about like, man, these guys are doing it right. Yeah. Um, and I'm interested in seeing what the long tail looks like when you talk about the young guys coming into the league and, and how wine will eventually become a part of our culture. Yeah, yeah. So I'm cool with that. All right, so what are you thinking about here? How are you feeling about this wine here? So... Give it a number. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go with 1999. Okay, 1999. Maybe 98. Okay. <laughs> I see you. I see you. Okay, so one of my favorite wines to drink. This is a uh, white Rioja. This is from Olivia Rivera. This is called uh, Miranda de Azul. Uh, so this is uh, mainly a, a traditional grape uh, made from Macabeo. And so this is actually um, eighty dollars. This is seventy-five to one hundred fifty dollars. This is our special occasion wine. Hmm. But it's good. It's good, right? It's, it's good. very good. It's great. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next round. All right. All right. I'm over two. We're gonna go ahead and start with number three. If I get if I get the next three, I'm good. We got our first red wine of the evening. Okay. And the fact that like you're looking at the color, I'm like, okay, he's on, he's on it. He's on it. Yeah. He's looking at it. He's into it. No, I'm, I'm into it. You spoke about Shaq. You won a championship with him. Um, does he have great taste in wine? Is it? Or does LeBron have better taste? I've never seen Shaq have a drink. That's interesting. I've never seen what Shaq take a drink. What about Barkley? Well, yeah, he has great taste. And, and well, he, you don't want to drink with him. Why not? Because he just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, like with some people got limits. Like you yeah. hit it, you're like, oh, I need to go lay down. You know, <laughs> Chuck can keep going. So I did. I had a night when I first signed with TNT. He took all of us out. And you know, Chuck took all of us out, and we, mm-hmm. you know, we had a night at the Four Seasons where we were just drinking, drinking, mm-hmm. drinking, different things. Drink mm-hmm. wine was there, so yeah. you know, we're drinking wine, we're drinking uh-huh. all the other stuff. And uh, let's just say I need a little help upstairs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then night, and Charles was like, "Hey, where are we going next?" I'm like, "I'm going to bed." So uh, you know, it is it's definitely cool to be able to, you know, uh, to, like you said once again, like. Even though Chuck and I are from different generations from the standpoint of sport, mm-hmm. like, and Draymond is from another generation, yeah. and to be able to sit down and, once again, connect through this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we forever have a connection through sitting down, having And having, having a, a glass of wine, yeah. Yeah, having a few drinks, you know? Yeah. So where are you at? So wait, what prices we got left? <laughs> I'm not telling you. I'm uh, not telling you. I, so I'm like... <sighs> I like it. I think it's elegant. Um, I don't think it's hella expensive. Mm-hmm. So, I got to go on this one. I'm going to go with this one back to the uh, 
I don't like, I don't like that look. <laughs> no, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going back to the, 20, the $20 range. $20 range. Do you think uh, grape? Where do you think? You, what kind? Grape region? Do you think you know where it's from? These are all bonus. These are all bonus no, things. No, no, please. Are all bonus thanks things, for right? having me because you know yeah. I need some. These I are all bonus go. things. Like, just like... Yeah, so I get closer to the uh, Pinot Noir family. Okay. Uh, like a lighter, like a lighter grape. Okay. Um, like that's why I love French wines because mm-hmm. it's lighter. You know where we at? D Way, Dwayne. This is 2016 Grand Cru Clos de Vougeot oh! Mayo Camelzé, my friend. <laughs> no, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hold, on, no. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me do this. <laughs> okay. Not the not Grand Cru. Let me Grand see that. Grand Cru. Yeah. So 2016. Uh, one of my favorite regions. Uh, you did get Pinot Noir right. Thank you. So this Thank is you. Pinot Noir uh, from the from the Holy Grail from Burgundy. Uh, this is Grand Cru Mayo Camze, one of the top producers wow. uh, from a Grand Cru vineyard, um, in 2016. Uh, you know, this wine reminds me a lot of your game, right? It's polished. It's mm. you know, it's refined. You know, it's like I was telling someone, it's and like, it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, it's definitely not cheap. Speaking of that, it, this wine is about four hundred and twenty-five dollars. This is the luxury life. I, I'm trying to do that because I got the price wrong, but I got the great right. You got the great right. You know, once again, I don't, right. I'm not a good shopper. <laughs> no, so I'm too busy. So apologize on these prices. Oh, what are you talking about? Like, you know what you like. So glass number four. See, he's a astute student. I see you. Gotta get somewhere. He's, he, he's looking at the glass. He's looking at the color. All right. Um, you've been name dropped in so many rap lyrics. So, like, I, I think it's a video clip out there somewhere oh. um, from our rookie season in the oh. NBA. Um, Karan Butler, who is a coach of the Heat right now. Oh, I love Karan. Um, him and I were talking across the locker room, and I was like, man, if I could just get my name dropped in one song, I made it. <laughs> I made it. And the first song, well, the first mainstream, okay. not the first song. Okay. The first mainstream song that I got my name dropped in was Empire State of Mind. Yep. Yeah. DJ. And so you couldn't tell me nothing. Still can't tell you nothing. <laughs> Still DJ, can't tell you nothing. Again. Let's play it. If Jesus paying LeBron, I'm paying Dwayne Wade. All right. <laughs> How are you feeling about this wine? Okay. Medium, full, like somewhat full body, but like this minus. Is a good wine. So this is a twenty dollar wine that I've been trying to get to. Okay. <laughs> like, one of them going to be right. <laughs> Let's go keep guessing the same one. I'm going to get one right. Okay. <laughs> Yo, your poker face is amazing. This is called M Sheep's Clothing. This is Washington State Cabernet. Um, and this comes in at $18.99. Okay. You got it. So this okay. is the Daily Dose. Washington State Cabernet. One of my favorites, right? Like, generally, I feel like this wine is not high in alcohol. It has some tannins to it, but it's not like mouth-blowing, like no. blowing you up. It's not extra no. hot. You know, that wasn't a descriptor that we had. Um, and to me, this is like quintessential, everyday drinking, you know, Washington State Cabernet. All right, we have number five here. Ooh. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It smells slightly dusty to me. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the ones where I'm like, if I smell it, I'd be like, hold on. <laughs> it smells like dirt. It just smells like dirt, like there's dirt in the air. This has got pretty decent acidity. Well, as soon as it hit my, as soon as it hit my lips, no. I, I immediately went to like... Mm-hmm. It's, it's good acid. Yeah. It's good acid. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, your son, Zaire, just got drafted by the Salt Lake City... Stars, yeah. Yeah, the Stars. Um, did you give me any advice? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah, a, a lot. Um, like, people will say, like, how does it feel to have Zaire following your footsteps? Okay. And I say, Zaire's not following my footsteps. Zaire is following his dreams. Zaire has, he's wanted to play basketball since he's been able to walk. He's, he's been playing basketball since he's been able to walk. Uh-huh. And so he's not following my footsteps. Zaire is following in Zaire's dreams. And so me as a father who has been through the exact same journey of having coaches and having teammates and just the life of, a, of an athlete, I'm able to help, you know, him throughout this process. So... For me and for our family, mm-hmm. the biggest thing for us is we're always trying to make sure that our kids get opportunities. My wife and I are first generation in our family to okay. accomplish the things we've accomplished, but we don't want to be the last. And so for us, I always say is, you know, throughout my life, it's been so many buildings and roadblocks and trees and all these things in a way. 
And I'm able to be able to go through that process before my son. Mm-hmm. And I'm able to move some of those things that's in his way. Correct. You know what I mean? And allow him to really see, you know, his dreams a, l- a little a little closer and a little clearer. Yeah, yeah. Like, I grew up with an image. Like, Michael Jordan was an image for me in the world. Whether he knew it or not, like, I looked at this guy the way he dressed, the right. way he did media Absolutely. interviews, the way he played. He became a positive image to someone I can look at and be like, oh, like, maybe I can do that. or Maybe I can be like that. And so it's a responsibility to, to be an image for, you know, little Dwayne. Correct. How hard was it to do this? How hard was it to open up and to share those private moments in your, your visual memoir? Well, Dwayne. it's very hard to allow someone in your private space. Absolutely. And I just remember um, being a kid and when it was no social media, of course, but I remember getting the opportunity to see Michael Jordan's book called Rare Air. Yeah. And I remember for the first time I seen Michael Jordan toes. <laughs> I was like, oh, he got corns like me. This is amazing. <laughs> and so the main thing I, I wanted people to see when they flipped through this book is the human. Yeah. You know, playing a game of basketball on TV, being great. You looked at this Superman, this superhero. Mm-hmm. And we're all just human. Yeah. And so you see moments in there. You see a lot of human moments. And it, it makes it, you know, to me, it makes it real. Because, okay. you know, I like to say is we live in a world right now of highlights. Absolutely. We yes. live in a world of highlights, Absolutely. and that is not, that's not true. You know, it's not it's real. Not. And so, for me, just to show those human moments and the, un, you know, it maybe get a little airbrush, but the unedited moments. No, no, but life. yeah, it, it shows <laughs> yeah. your vulnerability that yeah. you are human, and hopefully that makes it real for people. For sure. All right, so where are you at here? Where are you thinking? Well, price-wise, it's whatever's left. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how we intended this to go. That is not how we I'm intended this to go. I'm definitely certain that this is the one that I didn't pick, so you which get is this next one, to the high end. So you get this one right. <laughs> All right. Do you like this wine? Is it pleasurable? It's not my favorite. It's not your favorite. Something to drink. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of the wines that if I was at a restaurant and I drank and it wasn't one of my favorites, I would put this on. I put this in my notes on my phone. Okay. And I'll order it again. And I'll order it again. Tip. And I'll come back to it. Tip. That's it. Because at a different moment, I may have a different conversation. Mm-hmm. It may taste different. I may have a different. I Absolutely. may eat something different. So, yeah. I'm like, shit, how is this my show? Like, he's giving all the, you're dropping all the gems right no, now. No, Not I, me, I, but, I that, but that's the real shit. The real shit is like, hey, when you're on this journey of wine, it's not this quest to find the best thing that you want to drink the rest of your life. And maybe that's on the side notes, but the idea is like to understand a little bit more, right? So the idea, you said that this wine wasn't your favorite, but that you would take the time to write it down and say, hey, I want to taste this again. Yes. And that's, I feel like, is the magic in wine. Uh, and this is Chianti Classico. You know, one of the, this is called um, Grand Selezione. This is from Talani, uh, 2014. Um, also, that means the Sangiovese. Sangiovese is like this really kind of dusty, terroir driven, earth driven food wine. You know, you know, it's like strawberries. It's like yeah. this beautiful thing. It's like, you know, it's what most of the world knows Italian wine culture as. Um, and obviously, you got this one right. <laughs> <laughs> two out of two out of five. Uh, but, you know, like, this is a journey. This is what the, what this is all about, yeah. you know? I guess that's one of the, the, the cool things about this industry. You know, I can sit here as someone who has my own wine label, as someone who sits on the board of UC right. Davis, and you know, who's get exposed to some of the best wines in the world. It's, I don't know how I'm so lucky. And I can still get the price points wrong. Well, and that, still see, get, and that, you know, but that's man. the best part about yeah. all of this. It's all humbling. Yes. Right? Like, and the thing, when you strip everything away, it's a humbling experience. And like, you don't take this notion that I know everything. Right, you just keep pushing for it every single day, and I think that um, I thank you no. for, for for being here and and putting yourself out and saying, "Hey, I want to be a part of this." And yeah. the biggest part about all of this is not about price point and whether you can figure out what the price point is; it's whether you like it or not. Yeah, um, that's that's a metaphor for life. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to move on to the final round, the bonus wine. All right. Oh, we got, got a bonus wine. We got a bonus wine. I want you to tell me, what's your favorite? My favorite from tonight would probably be our third wine. Our third wine. So that's going to be the Mayo Camose, which is wine number three. So I've had five glasses, so I just want to let everybody know out there. I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling a little... That's the point. You're supposed to feel good. So we have the Grand yeah, Cru, Clos Vigeau. This is Mayo Camose, 2016. My team is going to go and tally up your points. <laughs> see if you're golden cork material. But in the meantime, cheers, brother. Cheers, man. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right, so let's play a game. It's called Flash Your Favorites. I'll ask you your favorites and you answer as fast as you can. Oof. I'm gonna say it and you just go. Okay. Like the first thing that comes to mind. Okay, favorite holiday? Thanksgiving. Favorite movie? Coming to America. Favorite designer? Well, I'm gonna go with the la- Gucci. 
Uh, the last all right, show Gucci, Gucci, all right. Well, the uh, last show I went to. <laughs> <laughs> favorite musical artist? Jay-Z. Okay. Uh, favorite tattoo artist? My tattoo artist, Cliff. Shout out to you, guy. All right, Cliff. Yeah, I'm tatted, I'm tatted. Uh, yeah, all right, Cliff. <laughs> um, favorite team in the NBA? Utah Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> that was the quickest. Favorite interview you've done today? Favorite interview I've done? This one. Thank you. All right. So, Dwayne, you got two out of five right. Sounds like me in school. <laughs> you know, I was a C student, maybe C minus. <laughs> if you got one more right, you would have been eligible to win our Golden Cork. But we don't give out any participation <laughs> trophies here. It's all good. You're a winner in life. You understand this thing. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah. Uh, and remember, uh, it's not about the price. It's about what you like. Thank you, man. Do the grapevine. Do the grapevine, baby. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, bro. When you go get a drink this kind of wine and for free? I ain't getting no bill out of this, right? Awesome. Not that you know, we're gonna bill you back. Yeah. yeah, this is cool, man. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah.